Brittany, what is your experience with Jody Hildebrandt? So years ago, I um, was made aware of Jody and her program and her therapy sessions, which I began in person here in St. George. Um, I felt like her style was a little bit more um, maybe aggressive than what I had experienced in the past which I, I thought was going to be a, a really good thing. I then joined her women's group, our weekly group sessions. And so I did that for nearly a year. What were those sessions like, the group sessions? Those group sessions were myself and however many other ladies, I would say 10 to 12 regularly, um, same, same women and had a expectation of, joining every week, not missing any weeks, two hour long sessions, um, probably similar to other group therapies where you are, you know, checking in, um, you are asking for time if you need time um, with the group specifically. And within the group, other, other rules were that you had to make a minimum of seven calls a week and you had to be available for a minimum a week. So you were on the phone a lot um, with these other group members, not so much Jody herself. If you wanted to speak to Jody or get help from her, you had to do one-on-one -on -one private sessions and then pay additional for those. Now, the initial reason you went and sought therapy was this uh, on your own? Was this couples? How would you describe what you were looking to do? Um, because the folks I've spoke to all have kind of a different experience of why they were going in the first place. Absolutely. Mine was just myself, just looking to further improve. And, you know, you, you hear of somebody different or a different way. So it was just worth a shot of something, something new. How did you find her? Do you remember? It was a friend of a friend. Um, I, I couldn't even remember the friend if I tried. Um, name came up. I looked up the website and, and booked an appointment um, that way. How would you describe some of the conversations or tactics without getting into the nitty gritty details, of course, but you mentioned um, perhaps a little uniqueness in her style. How so? Mm -hmm. um, I would say with traditional therapy or other uh, therapists I've gone to, there's a little bit more of uh, a feeling of understanding of maybe what a person's been through, whereas this was pretty strict on like. It, like no excuses you're just going to make it happen and it's up to you a hundred percent um I, I would call it more military style if I had to like give it a name versus something else how long did you end up participating in either individual or group sessions as it pertains to Jody Hildebrand or her company just over a year in your individual session, right? Because I know you did the, the women's group, but in any of your individual sessions, when you had more of that one-on-one -on -one interaction, did anything stand out from those experiences? Um, the, the one thing that I mentioned when I, when I did speak to other friends about, um, about her and the program, she felt um, extremely uncaring. It felt like uh, transactional. Um, the group, I got a lot of uh, validation or help within the group. I think it was having that level of support and accountability. You know, if you're going to be talking on the phone and, and talking about things for, you know, this many hours a week, it's it's kind of maybe a higher likeliness to work than a one hour session a week with someone else. Uh, but it, it just was like a general feeling of um, uncaring. I went there in a moment of like really deep despair if you will and it just kind of was like well either sign up and pay the money or see you later you know and I and I took that again as like well maybe that's the difference between her and and others you know she's not really sympathetic or soft it was kind of like felt like pay the money join the group buy the books buy the program and see you later why did you decide to leave either both the group or, or individual sessions after about that year's time? Uh, the individuals, um, again, I, I didn't feel like I was getting a lot out of 
out of it. Not that I needed necessarily compassion. It just didn't feel really conducive. Uh, the group, um, I felt like I got a lot, again, of just maybe that one-on-one -on -one support, but it wasn't really the, the type of support that I thought that it was going to evolve to. Well, obviously, um, Jody is still in the local jail in Washington County, as is Ruby Frankie. And we're waiting to hear if uh, bail will be granted or anything like that. But what I haven't asked you yet is, what are your thoughts just on this whole situation after you heard that she was arrested and on these allegations of child abuse charges? Um, you know, when I when I first saw the name, her name in in the news, I wasn't familiar with Ruby at the time, but her name is pretty specific. And I, you know. And I went, that can't be. And, you know, of course, it, it was easily identifiable to be her. I'm really shocked um, on the level of, of egregiousness where, you know, her, her counseling was so much honest, humble, responsible, like almost like I said, military style of like beating that into us as, as the participants as like, you know, your, you know, you're to be this way just like really really you know aggressively so to hear her main motto be like completely contradictory to her life and the things that she's doing was just really astonishing was there any instances of, of she using a shaming tactic with anybody whether it was group or individual i believe so I, I believe so in, in the in the sense that again maybe that uncaring coming across more like shaming if you're going to allow it to affect you like shame on you like that's your own problem as though you know we don't have human emotions and you should basically choose to just shut that off and and deal with it there was one more particular thing that stood out to me that she spoke about in the group um felt a bit unprofessional at times that um, I think at some point maybe her license was taken away um, and she spoke about that kind of a lot and I mentioned that because it was almost kind of weird that she mentioned that she was basically doing this higher duty to the world this higher service if you will and that she was punished by society, you know, in, in the light of like taking her licensing away. But it, it was interesting how many times it was mentioned. So it sounds like she thought uh, very highly of herself and her abilities. That, that would be a very accurate statement from my perspective. The only, you know, the only other thing that comes to mind many of the people in my group and I would say probably almost a hundred percent they were married um and and through the LDS church referrals um I think mainly for their husband you know they're they're doing this kind of group duel with her um so she did the male group and the female group I I um believe at one other point there was one or two other singles um that didn't last very long but it was primarily married people um, and I, I did toward the end, a lot of the reason for leaving is I felt like there, it was very targeted toward the church and mentioned that the church was paying for these people's services, which, you know, left a bit of a bitter taste in my mouth knowing not, not that people aren't deserving of help or that the church isn't supposed to help. It felt very targeted again from her more in a way of like, I found a way to take advantage of a niche and I found, I found a loophole, but she was again thinking highly enough about herself that she was almost bragging about it. I, I can validate uh, some of the male perspectives that, that I've been hearing. It was very, the narrative was very much like if your husband is not perfect, it is your job to leave him and he is undeserving. And if he was to be living honest, responsible, humble, you know, these values, uh, then he would be deserving. But it, it honestly, um, I'm actually glad you brought that up because it reminds me, um, I, I remember telling a friend, it felt like 
if I had been married entering the group, I would be exiting the group as a, a, a divorced. It felt very much like not necessarily that she hated men or marriage, but uh, she definitely wasn't an advocate of, of for them. I, I don't know in what level of perfection one can establish, but we're all human and it definitely felt like there was never going to be reaching her level of her own perfection and the perfection she expected within her groups.